With the controversial introduction of VAR in recent years, many challenges that are deemed dangerous are caught right there and then on the pitch. Well, most of them anyway. What we're going to dive into today are the challenges that could have or should have landed certain players in prison, but instead they got off without even taking an early shower. From challenges that replicate that of the karate kid to brutal acts of assault. Normally when saying break a leg, it's typically used to wish people good luck. But for Georges Rotario, the saying was almost too close for comfort. A 1988 European clash brought together Rangers and Steaua, where Graham Sones was playing his football. He was described as a tough tackling no-nonsense midfielder from his time as Liverpool captain. When the ball dropped in the middle of the park, Sones picked up possession and dribbled towards Rotario. Before Rotario got a chance to even attempt a tackle, Sonus, in some form of delusion, stomped his studs directly into his thigh, just above the knee. Auditioning for Hollywood, Sonus tried to play it off like he'd been caught in a challenge but was clearly the better off out of the two. Whether the ref had been blown away by Sonus' poor acting or had just forgotten his glasses, I couldn't tell you, but Sonus got off scot-free without any punishment at all. This next one for me personally anyway is the most unbelievable. But just before we go ahead and unpack it, can I ask you to drop a like if you're enjoying the video so far? Anyway, back to it. In the 82 Spanish World Cup, there was a genuine threat to life when Harold Schumacher put Bruce Lee to shame by flying into French forward Battiston, wiping him completely out. The goalkeeper had already smacked the striker in the face in an early incident in the game. The challenge was described as one of the worst fouls in World Cup history, as Battiston lay out cold on the pitch. He had to be stretched off unconscious and it was discovered he had damaged his ribs and lost three of his teeth. Despite the three lost teeth, the ref actually gave the foul to Germany and play resumed as normal. Now I'm not sure what the referee was thinking. Maybe it was fear of what Schumacher would do to him if he did punish him. Now, it wasn't just the near-death tackle that people were concerned about, it was the nature of the goalkeeper himself amidst all of the commotion. He didn't approach the Frenchman to even check for a pulse, instead he did some kick-ups and stood with his hands on his hips as if the pause in play was an inconvenience for him. When learning about the injuries caused from the journalist, he joked that he would pay for the crowns. Evidence of karma existing prevailed as Germany went on to lose the final of the competition to Italy and the fallout for Schumacher was as brutal as his foul. In a newspaper poll, he beat a certain radical German moustache man as France's greatest enemy. Anti-German feelings in the nation rose. The next example is on the same level as the previous one, and it actually includes a national hero. But first, the villain in question is none other than Andoni Goicochea, whose brutal attack on Maradona earned him the title The Butcher of Bilbao. In the 83 game, the butcher flew in on the young Maradona and snapped his ankle. The challenge was described as the worst tackle in Spanish football history. Luckily, Maradona was able to recover from the broken ankle and write the rest of his illustrious career, but it could have been cut short right there. In his autobiography, Maradona recalls that Andoni actually told him before the game he was going to do this to him. And the worst thing is he didn't even get a yellow card. I can't even imagine what punishment he would receive these days. The Butcher of Bilbao didn't only do this to Maradona. He took this nickname on his shoulders and continued to carry out these attacks on players. He ended the football career of an English-born Algerian player named Rashid Harkok when Spain met Algeria in the 86 Mexican World Cup. Harkok recalled that Goa Kichea went for his knee with such force he shattered it into pieces. After that game, Rashid Harkok never kicked a ball again and was forced to retire. He clearly wasn't ashamed of his actions as he has the boots he broke Maradona's ankle with on display in his living room. He also calls the foul his greatest moment as a defender. Scary guy. On the theme of legends of the game, we turn our focus to the 1991 FA Cup Final. This time it is the legend delivering the fatality. Paul Gascione, known as Gaza, was clearly feeling the heat of the game as he had delivered a nasty reckless tackle not too long before this specific incident and it was a miracle that he avoided receiving a yellow. Gary Charles was then making his way forward when Gaza threw a leg kick Conor McGregor would be proud of straight across the knees of Charles. This contact was so bad it actually ruptured the Tottenham player's knee ligaments. It was cringeworthy. But the biggest shock was that Gascione didn't see red or even a yellow for the deathly challenge a couple 
couple of minutes after the previous one. I'm not sure what charms Gaza had working over the ref, but he was very lucky not to be arrested, let alone sent off. Our penultimate example didn't quite avoid punishment altogether, but was able to play the rest of the game on the field. At first glance, it just looked like a silly foul where Lee Bowyer swiped the legs of Dorado, which should have seen a yellow, but upon further inspection, you can actually see something after the initial foul. You can see that he stomps on the head of the player on the floor with some aggression too. It clearly was not an accident. However, the ref must have forgotten his specs at home as he missed the incident and Bowyer went unpunished. This attack is the black sheep of this video as it only went unnoticed until the end of the game. UEFA actually pulled him up on this post game and handed him a six match ban, describing the incident as an act of serious assault. Finally, some justice. Now, unfortunately, we have reached the final talking point of this video. But if you feel we've missed any obvious ones like the refs did here, then please let us know in the comments. You are our VAR. This is the example we were referring to when we mentioned replicating the karate kid. However, there was definitely an element of kung fu in there too. In the World Cup final, where the Netherlands faced off against Spain, there was a coming together between Nigel de Jong and Zabi Alonso. And by coming together, we mean de Jong's studs coming together with Zabi Alonso's chest. If you pause the video at the right moment, it resembles a finisher from Mortal Kombat. Temperatures were already flaring in this bad-tempered game, and this only added fuel to the fire. In the UFC, this would have been applauded, but in a game of football, it was described as the most blatant red card I've ever seen, and Alonso himself said it was one of the worst tackles he had ever suffered. The Spanish felt the red was rightly deserved, but the Dutchman only received a yellow. Was the ref a fan of the technique on the kung fu kick, or just blind? Let us know in the comments below, as that's all we have time for today. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to leave a like and subscribe so you won't miss any of the action going forward. But for now, this is Onside Football signing off.